All right, this is going to be the second part of my healthcare video on why healthcare is so expensive. My first video, or if you're watching this video first, the other video is about the supply side, how a restriction of the supply, just like any other good, is going to raise the price, and what exactly is restricting the supply of medical care. Uh, obviously, it is government that does this uh, with an excuse for good intentions, and maybe even with the actual intent of good intentions, but clearly at the behest of and to the benefit of special interests, especially doctors and the medical industry generally. However, a price is always determined by both supply and demand. So if demand, the government has reduced demand enormously, or I'm sorry, reduced supply by some order of magnitude, how much is hard to say. But if supply uh, shrank by the same order of magnitude, the price wouldn't be any different. So if healthcare, say if in 1900 a year's supply of healthcare cost one or two days of the average skilled worker, which by the way is a roughly accurate estimate of your typical healthcare cost back then. Uh, if the government somehow halved the supply, but at the same time demand for medical care also halved, the price would still be about the same, all things being equal. Uh, as it's turned out, the demand for healthcare services has actually probably increased, mostly because of longevity. People are just living longer into a period of their lives humans typically don't live but they have very high health care costs uh, and uh, since there's literally tens of millions of people doing that uh, the demand if anything has gone up so and to say nothing of say uh, the uh, obesity problem or smoking or anything like that so in this video I want to talk about uh, the demand for healthcare, and there's two main things that have driven uh, the demand up, and hence the price. Now, one is directly the fault of the government; the other is indirectly the fault of the government. And uh, both of them have, in addition to simply increasing the price, uh, an interesting fact where they they uh, they stop people from shopping around, which has the uh, has the effect of uh, lowering competition basically so uh, the first way I'm going to talk about is the direct subsidy this is if government uh, is directly paying for uh, people's medical care whether it be through Social Security Medicare or Medicaid now these are programs that are popular which is not to say that they are correct or make sense just that lots of people like them which again does not mean that they're actually good uh, and they have a very obvious effect of driving up prices. If you divert a river of government money into an industry, then that is increasing the demand. Now, if tomorrow Obama gave a speech that uh, it's the American dream that everybody have a riding lawnmower and that it's not fair that rich people can sit on a lawnmower or poor people have to either push one with their own two legs or heaven forbid, not mow their grass, um, the price of riding lawnmowers would not stay the same. I, let's just say, um, you know, that if you qualified for, if you were, quote, poor, if you were the Medicare or Medicaid for lawnmowers or the Social Security for lawnmowers, then the federal government, you know, with certain stipulations, since you you not get the priciest kind or whatever, would pay for your lawnmower. The price of lawnmowers would just go through the roof. Uh, because the retailers and the producers of lawnmowers would say, hey, Uncle Sam doesn't need to be haggled with. He has deep pockets. He's not going to ask. Uh, and so we would be stupid not to raise our prices to accommodate him. And that's what would happen. And this would be the case with any industry that Uncle Sam decides, or the government generally decides to subsidize. The other industry where this is the most obvious outside of medical care is education, where uh, prices have ballooned, I believe, even worse than education, or even worse than medical care. When they just say, we're going to pay, even if they want you to pay it back, even if it's only a loan, uh, it just balloons the price incredibly. Uh, if you look uh, in the past, before the government was just giving loans to anybody who wanted to go to college, uh, basically living, going to school was 
basically becoming poor. You would live a uh, very, very frugal Spartan existence. Uh, you know, lots of people in very cheap housing. Uh, you know, the cliche is you'd be in a dorm and the food that the school would feed you would be of, you know, questionable quality. And there wouldn't be huge rec centers and pools and gyms and all manner of young adult plaything. And the reason there is now is because there's a river of government money flowing in. And it's also the reason you have apartment complexes and condominiums and basically little cities uh, for young adults that crop up around college towns. I, I, every college town I know about has these now. Uh, the only thing is, how, depending on how big the school is, it's going to affect how big the... the well. Medicine's the same way, and we can see that the cost of medicine began to rise steadily uh, once the government became more involved in paying for people's bills. Now, if you're getting the subsidy, you might say, well, what's the big problem? Medicare or Medicaid, who cares if they're bidding up the price? They're paying for your medicine. Yes, but they're bidding up the price not just for the people who get the subsidy, but for everyone, which will eventually, will instantly begin pricing people out at the margins. So, before the government started directing literally billions of dollars into the medical industry, there were people who could afford medical care, but only, you know, the people who could afford it comfortably, and then there were some people who could just barely afford it. Well, when the prices start to rise, because you're basically competing with Uncle Sam, uh, the people on the margins, the people who were just, just could barely afford it, will suddenly be in a position, well, now they can't. And a few years later, the people who could comfortably afford it now can't. And... Uh, this is a, I mean, this happened a little bit with Social Security, but in a big way with Medica Medicare and Medicaid, and uh, it's going to happen big time now with Obamacare. Um, this is guaranteed to bid up prices. Uh, now, the other way is through insurance. Now, people tend to equate insurance with uh, the free market and kind of view it as the antithesis of government health care. And there's nothing wrong with people who want to buy insurance. And insurance is a market phenomenon. However, medical insurance in the United States um, is something that was directly sparked by, subsidized, and uh, eventually even uh, explicitly mandated by the government. People want to know uh, when did insurance become so popular for medical care. It was during World War II. It's kind of interesting. People are always talking about, well, we need the government to uh, protect wages. If we didn't have the government, uh, wages would go to zero, and we'd all be working for pennies on the, you know, for a day. Uh, that's just silly. Uh, during World War II, the government actually set maximum wages. Uh, basically, there was enormous inflation during World War II, even though we were still ostensibly on a gold standard, and the government sold a lot of bonds. There was a lot of inflation, and when the government has a lot of inflation and they don't want people to see rising prices, they institute wage and price controls. So they'll set gas can only be this much, sugar can only be this much, and your pay can only be this much, uh, something most people tend to forget. Now, contrary to popular belief, uh, employ employers need employees, and they bid for them. And if you set a maximum wage rate and you say you can only pay your employees this much, then... I mean, normally the way employers bid for employees is they offer them higher and higher wages. If you cap their wages, then what they still do to compete for labor is offer perks. And so a grocery store might say, for instance, we can't pay you, you know, more than whatever, 50 cents an hour. But if you work for us, we'll give you so many groceries. Or if you work for a car company, maybe we give you so many credits to buy a car. I mean, World War II, that wouldn't have been the case because it was illegal to buy cars. And it was illegal to get extra food, although there was a considerable black market in that area. Um, but one of the things that companies started to do was to offer medical care. We can't pay you a higher wage, but we'll pay your doctor's bills. We'll get you into an insurance program. And uh, after the war, the government would, say, tax your income, but they would not tax anything that your employer spent on your medical care. Uh, okay, when you tax one revenue stream but not another then you are subsidizing that non-taxed stream and you're encouraging its growth and this is exactly what happened uh, eventually uh, the states got more explicit about this and it depends on the state and the time but they even started mandating that, that insurance pay for this or that so you couldn't necessarily just get major medical the state might say if you go 
to the hospital, insurance has to cover, you know, not, maybe not everything, but certain, any number of things. And it would be akin if, if, if Obama said your insurance now has to pay for the cost of the gas that you spend to drive to the hospital, what would that do to insurance? It'd have to go up to account for the fact that, you know, now they're going to be buying a tank of gas for thousands of people a year or whatever. Um, now, there's several effects of this. Uh, first, whenever you have a third-party payer, uh, there's a disconnect between the consumer and the pr provider, and they communicate a lot less, and there's a lot less shopping around. Uh, so competition is, is blunted. It still exists, but it's blunted. Uh, and this is definitely the case with, say, um, the Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and it's also the case with the insurance. People don't shop around. And so you can be a doctor and you can be charging 20% more than your competitors, but uh, the people who are coming for your services, if they're not paying for out-of-pocket, they're not going to care, or at least not as much. The insurance companies might care, but the insurance company might be based in a city in another state or hundreds of miles away, and they just might not be able to keep track of, of prices that well. Uh, so the third-party payer, uh, in addition to just causing rivers of money to flow in here, and again, we have money directly flowing in from the Treasury and being directed there by the government, uh, via the subsidy to insurance by not taxing it and then even eventually mandating it. Um, and there's another delirious uh, or bad effect of this. Uh, the government, contrary to most people's beliefs, cannot simply um, provide you with everything you want. Uh, there's no medical system in the world, I don't care, Sweden, Canada, that just says whatever you need, whatever you want, we'll just pay it, get it, get it right away and we'll pay it. No, they, they can't that would cost so much because everyone would be demanding everything right away. You got the sniffles, I'm going to go to the doctor and have him do, give me a full work down. I mean, you could literally demand half a million dollars in tests every time you got a runny nose. And the governments can't do that. So they attach strings and they say, okay, you can do this and you can do that, but you can't do this. And this has the effect of uh, causing the medical industry to curt or whatever industry is being subsidized in such a way with such strings to grow to uh, fit the demands of the state, who is now the, the, the main buyer. This would be analogous to if the government said, listen, uh, everyone has a right to a computer. We're going to buy computers for poor people. If you're in a certain bracket, we will purchase you a computer. Uh, it's very likely that Bill Gates would expend enormous lobbying power to say, listen, you shouldn't just buy any computer. You should buy a PC. You should not buy a Mac or some other there, there would be uh, stipulations like that. Maybe not even lobbied for. They could be quite accidental. Accidental. The people in government might just think, well, you need to get a computer that has this many gigabytes or this many terabytes or needs to have this kind of computer. Not even in a corrupt way. Well, if that ha starts to happen, the retailers, the suppliers of computers, the producers of computers are going to change their habits. And For instance, they want PC. The government's going to pay for PCs and not Macs. Macintosh could go out of business, or at the very least will shrink relative to, to uh, Microsoft and whoever builds the PC type of computers. Uh, we have this in medical care. The government will pay for certain procedures and not other procedures. And so those procedures that are uh, not covered by, by the state are going to dwindle or even be eradicated, and those that are prescribed by the state, whether or not they're that efficacious, are going to uh, be subsidized and increased. And so uh, we have a clear case here where the demand is just shooting through the roof. The rivers of government money are going to bid up prices. The uh, third-party payer that is subsidized now explicitly by the government, I mean, this is, I'm, even before Obamacare, this was a huge problem. Obamacare is making it uh, an astronomical problem. Uh, we have the price, I mean... <laughs> All this stuff is guaranteed to raise prices. You can't have the government spend billions of dollars a year in addition to normal medical care and just think, oh, the price is going to come down. So uh, between the, the supply, the restriction of the supply, and the increase for the demand, uh, the price is just astronomically higher than it would otherwise be. How much? There's no way to know for sure. Um, but I think that 
it would be I think that this really is analogous to the computer industry and people are gonna say lengthy owner theory you don't know what you're talking about computers are so cheap relative to uh, medical care that uh, you're crazy and I I have to say to that is that if you believe that then you have been inured to reality thanks to the plenty of free market capitalism because 20 30 years ago uh, computers were absurdly expensive absurdly expensive for GM they could have computers uh, but even a wealthy millionaire would very unlikely gone to the trouble of buying a computer and not only that but the computers back then were infinitesimally retarded and incapable as compared to computers today they would have been as big as a room and had less commuting power than I don't know a fanny pack today and the government has not regulated the computer industry has not really subsidized it directly there have been some indirect things here and there like uh, Microsoft getting its business models basically based on copyright but uh, other than that very little no no government insurance uh, for computers no government program to buy people computers really at least big ones I'm I mean, I know municipalities and stuff that will buy laptops for school kids or whatever, but that's all been after the fact, after the industry was already coming in. The price of computers comes down. The price of computing power has come down enormously. And we're to the point now where poor people can, I mean, literally poor homeless people can have smartphones, can have, have equipment that was um, didn't even exist 15, 20 years ago at any price. And that's because we have a relatively free market in computers and that material is just as sophisticated if not more sophisticated than the medical equipment people think is automatically making stuff so high now there's a couple objections people raise you know to to say that the medical industry is somehow unique uh, all of them are pretty fallacious uh, one is that well just the medical equipment itself uh, is just and I've already kind of alluded to this is uniquely expensive this is just not true uh, most industries that you can think of have capital equipment that is extremely expensive uh, a new John Deere tractor uh, that's necessary for modern agriculture can easily cost a quarter of a million or a half a million dollars uh, the capital required to run a farm runs into the millions of dollars often enough uh, an auto repair place is going to have advanced machine tools, advanced equipment uh, that's going to be comparable to even expensive stuff you can find at the hospital. I mean, just the the investment in an average gas station is going to be like a million dollars or close to a million dollars, and that's for every gas station. And there can be dozens of them in a single town, and yet the price for your gas is just dollars on a gallon when it should only really be it's it's really a dime if you use the old Peter Schiff solar model um, you know your corn even though your corn requires gigantic threshing machines and you know enormous capital resources you buy it at the store and it's what 50 cents a pound maybe a dollar a pound I don't know it, and there's more capital equipment tied up in that than there's in all the hospitals in the United States uh, so that doesn't really fly and the other thing with computers obviously now the other thing people say is but you really need it you can't say no well it's true that we can concoct scenarios and indeed uh, statistically possible scenarios where you know you don't really have a choice uh, if you suddenly have a heart attack and there's a hospital right by you well that's the one you're gonna have to go to but I can make the same argument for any number of things when I drive across the West uh, sometimes there's only one gas station every hundred or so miles and you pretty much have to stop there does that mean that we need to nationalize gas stations or that the government should take over gas stations everywhere no absolutely not um, sometimes you only have one place you can buy food I mean there's sort of a natural monopoly everything is a natural monopoly within a certain absolute geographic area I mean, we can say there's only one pizza place on this block, and so they're going to get, they have an advantage over all other pizza places on that block. Uh, medical care is the same way. Uh, now, if you had competition, uh, you have Dr. A and Dr. B, 
you're going to pick not the one that is going to give you the service that you require. So if, if you think Dr. B is a quack and isn't going to do you any good, then you're not going to go to him. He'll go out of business. But if you think both of them can do what you need done, you're going to go to the one who charges you less. And so they both, since they want to make a living, have an incentive to be able to offer that at the lowest possible price. And if you have free entry, if anyone who wants to can try and become a doctor, then even if you only have one, then he has every incentive to keep his prices low because then he would just be inviting competition. This is why a national monopoly doesn't quite work. Say you have one small town, there isn't enough business to have multiple doctors, but if so the one local doctor just goes, well, you know what, I'm just going to increase my rates by 10 times and I'm just going to keep getting paid. No, because then he's just going to ask uh, for his customers to either leave or to invite someone else to come and then all of a sudden uh, he'll lose all of his business to the guy who's going to charge 80% as much as him and so then he's going to have to charge 80% as you know and they're going to go and they don't go to zero this and th th what they go to in the market is they're going to their their prices are going to adjust to the uh, discounted marginal revenue product which is to say they're going to approach what it actually costs them to provide the service so if a doctor uh, fixes, you know, I don't know, uh, say you break your arm and a doctor uh, treats your, your broken arm and he has to use so many anesthetics and they cost so much and he has to use so many stitches and they cost so much and he needs to use so much electricity and, you know, so many other drugs, uh, however much they all cost and then how much his labor is worth on the market that's going to be what it actually approaches, not some astronomically high arbitrary number that he made up. The only reason that it could be that high is if there is a restriction in supply, if the free market is being violated and, uh, uh, and, and he doesn't have competition. That's the only systemic way that's going to happen other than uh, dramatic short-term changes. So let's say uh, uh, for some reason, say you're in a small town with a hundred people, and then uh, one day there's I don't know uh, uh, a music festival, and a hundred thousand people show up. Uh, the doctor might be swamped, and he might have to raise prices. But that's not a long-term thing. If that actually persisted, that would encourage other doctors to come. So there's there's a tendency for the price uh, of goods and services on a free market. This is true with every good and service. There's no exceptions to this. To approach the actual costs to the producer. They can't go lower than that because then they start to lose money going out of business, which starts to raise the price up again, but that's where they go. And the tendency on the free market is for prices, the quality of services to increase and their prices to go down. That's the tendency, and this was the tendency in medical care. If you go back to the turn of, say, the 18th, 19th century, around 1800, Having a doctor was a fairly expensive thing. Uh, that, that is something that most people probably just figured to do without. They were relatively rare, so in most places you just wouldn't even have access. If you did have access, they'd be somewhat expensive. And it was kind of something for the aristocracy to have and the rest of us to not have. By the end of the 19th century, so 1900, uh, probably at the end of the, yeah, end of the 19th century, so 1900, Doctors were basically available to almost everybody unless you were extremely poor and available at totally affordable prices. So in the course of 100 years, there was a massive uh, increase in availability and a massive decrease in price. And just this wasn't unique to medical care. There was a decrease in prices for pretty much everything during the 20th, 19th century. And this is long before the government ever got involved. We only see the skyrocketing of price after the government got in to help. Uh, and what the government's doing now is uh, going to be even worse than what it's done so far. So uh, I don't like to, we don't know what the actual price would be, but uh, my guess is that it would be at least two orders of magnitude, which is to say, I, I think it would literally be at least 10 times cheaper uh, and you'd have a lot less insurance and getting a major medical operation would be akin to having a major auto repair, something that it might push you back a little bit, 
you might have to save up for a paycheck or two, but it's not something that's going to indebt you forever. That's very unlikely in the vast majority of cases. And then there would be insurance for those who really worry about something that, because there are some conditions, a condition that you could just fix with, you know, a series of operations. I don't think that would put anybody back too much. If you have a condition that just requires constant ongoing medical treatment, that could get expensive, although even then, I think it would be literally like at least 10, if not 100 times cheaper. Um, but you could still get insurance for that. But now, Obamacare, I made another video called Obamacare Cometh. Uh, Obamacare is going to make this so vastly expensive. And what really upsets me about this is that people are not going to attribute the rise in price with Ob Obamacare. Most people are going to just assume that it's some kind of mysterious phenomenon that has nothing to do with the government. And the government has been actively trying to fix healthcare now in a big way since the Great Society and in more subtle but uh, still significant ways since almost 100 years, but well, 60 years before that, around the turn of the century. And yet somehow all this manipulation is thought to have had no effect. But no, it's it's made it more expensive, and it's restricting our choices. Uh, like I said, by subsidizing certain procedures to the expense of others, uh, entire fields of medicine have basically been ignored, which isn't to say that they should predominate, but they shouldn't have been artificial, artificially languishing because bureaucrats and the FDA or whatever decided that they didn't like them as much as some other industry, even if they made that decision in a non-corrupt way, which is giving them more credit than I think that they're due. So uh, I think that it's just really important right now to remind everybody that they're, we're getting fucked by the government when it comes to medical care. Um, we're about to get fucked a lot worse with Obamacare. I don't have a lot of hope that it's going to be overturned. Uh, I don't think the states really do have the power to undo anything they want, but I just don't see them doing that, at least most of them. Uh, to be really effective, you want to have at least a dozen or so, you know, being really out in front, and I don't see that as very likely, but who knows. Um, and I just think the biggest tragedy is that most people are just not even going to realize it's because they're rationally ignorant. They care more about sports and what else, whatever else is going on. They don't go online and read about the history of all this stuff. They don't know about the AMA and Medicare and Medicaid. All they, To them, those are just benevolent government gifts. That's manna from heaven that uh, altruistic politicians have graciously made available to them not something that bids up prices and that is pricing them all out of health care. So uh, I think that should do it. I don't think it needs more videos than this, at least for now. But uh, also, I would like to, if, if it doesn't exist, I'd like to make a list of basically all this stuff uh, with sources, uh, so basically as a flyer. I want to go around and hand these out to people and make, listen, everything's fucked. This is why and it's too late. You're not going to change your congressman's mind or whatever. I'm not going to have you go and try and agitate to get Obamacare overturned. I just want you to know that you're getting screwed, and I want you to know who's screwing you. Because then maybe next time uh, you won't fall for it so easy. So if anyone knows, of, I've, I've been looking. I haven't really found exactly what I'm looking for. I might have to try and throw something together myself uh, and then contact my local cadre of ANCAPs and start spamming the hell out of my little town. But uh, we'll see. All right, that's it.